r slash ask reddit what is the single most you'll understand it when you're older thing friendships fading away you remember my dad telling me all kinds of cool stories about things him and his friends did in the past i even asked him why aren't you still friends with these people he really did basically say it's complicated you'll understand when you're older even back then i remember thinking that's crazy me and my friends will always be friends sitting here now in my early 30s and it really hits home losing best friends is the hardest it's definitely like a breakup ammo. It hurts your heart but in a different way. My heart still really aches to this day how my best friend became my ex-best friend. Edit. Thank you to who gave me the silver. It's a first. Really glad I'm not alone in BF heartaches. Edit to edit. Your stories and sharing. I wanna reply to all of them and, and give you all BII hugs. I'm a huge empath and I've been tearing up and crying because I feel for every one of you. Thank you for hugs and silver but I wish I could give you all real hugs and silver in return. Not everybody is going to like you. Even if you're a good person. This one really set my mind free once I took it to heart. I actually like when people at work for example are act like they hate you when they haven't even had a conversation with you. When someone doesn't like you, you don't need to worry about what they think or feel anymore. Duck em. Less energy spent. I also used to try to make everyone like me. Now I always focus on what my values are first. And if someone likes me then great. If they don't then it's also great. Because if I don't allow myself to mildly inconvenience people I barely know, then how am I going to act when I'm in a situation where I'm having to negotiate over something, or someone is crossing a line they shouldn't be? The quiet. Boring. Simple. Times are the best. Everyone's fed. Happy. Healthy. Sure. Napping. These are the good times. Very true. Sleep is no punishment it's a gift. Yup, I used to dislike nap times when I was in kindergarten. Now that I'm older, I wish I could take a nap here and there during my work days. If the door is closed, you should always knock. I have seen your name, and I don't even wanna know why you made this comment. I feel that younger people are the ones who understand this and adults are famously oblivious to it. Money. There was a reason that you didn't get those shoes. The PS5. A new shiny car, etc. Maintaining a home and keeping the family fed is ducking expensive. It's funny, we try to teach our kids to cut money. For a while we gave them £2 a week but that just ended up they spent it straight away on chocolate. We switched to £10 a month. Now they realize if they spend it all really fast they have a long wait till they can get anything else. And they realize that they can have a lot of money in 6 months. One still spends it much faster than the other. My son lost his $100 headphones I bought him and was pretty bitter I wouldn't replace them. Then he got a job at McDonald's. His very first check I drove him to the store to get new headphones. All of a sudden we are in the store reading reviews while he decides that maybe he really only needs a $50 pair for now. Amazing how much different it is when it's your own hours of work. King Triton. Ariel's dad was right. She was just a child and she was not in love with the random prince she saw for all of 30 seconds. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Friends. I will take it back to my hoard of trinkets from the human world. Honestly. This is a great example of what's wrong with parent-child interactions. Because when we were kids. We did agree with Ariel. We were persuaded by her emotions and saw her desires as our own. As adults. We have a fully developed brain. Hopefully. And more life experience. And therefore we aren't convinced by the ephemeral, but intense emotions, that kids teenagers have. But rather than validating Ariel's feelings, interests, and desires, Triton's basically like you're wrong for feeling that way. And also I'm going to destroy your room. Which actually happens. Parents actually do that and are then surprised when the kid turns to the only validating adult in the room. Who just might be a soul stealing witch. I really like revisiting media as an adult. Not only to see how my sympathies have changed, but also to make sure that I'm not the adult who is perpetuating the conflict by not listening. Because as an adult, I expect better from myself. Edit. Well, just got back from my D&D campaign to find that this exploded. Thank you, kind strangers, for the gold and various awards. Not only did it make me smile uncontrollably, but I think it highlights an important point for all of us. 
There is power is listening. And this is why my dad watched every single kids show and movie with me. Not only did we stop to talk about different points of view, but it allowed my dad to first hand see what I thought related to while watching these movies. Honestly knowing that my dad don't agree with Triton either made me way more comfortable to come talk to him about other stuff later. Since I knew he wasn't going to act like that. 15 stroke 10 recommend actually watching shit with your kid and not just putting the TV on and walking away. Time. Wasting time. And how time flies. It's mid deck and I'm saying to myself what the heck it's been 9 months of covid and I can't believe this year is almost over. As you age it seems to go faster and faster. When I was younger I felt like time just dragged on some days. I can remember when I was school age. The year seemed to drag on forever. Then when it did end we had a 6 weeks holidays. 6 whole weeks. With hour upon hour of sunshine. Towards the end of it school was but a distant memory. It felt like it would never end. Of course it always did when September finally arrived. Now I work at a school and it's terrifying how quickly we blaze through each term. Those same holidays are over in a flash. I think it's because now I'm older I'm consciously worried about making the most of the time off. Not wasting it. When I was young the biggest worry was whether my friends and I would play in the woods or on the fell that day. Time wasn't a worry. We thought we had all the time in the world. I think it's other stuff too. Like the older you get, and the more responsibility you get, more shit needs to be done. So it's always a feeling of this is when this needs to be done or this is when I can expect this to happen. You, for most adults, know exactly what you'll be doing after the holiday. Things need to be prepared. So the time you have off you cherish it more which makes it seem like less than what it is. Because you have to do more with the time you have left. That's one reason I want to be wealthy one day. Not for the money or a big house or anything. To be able to afford to just spend time alone. Being happy. Or doing things that don't cause me stress all the time. Even the stress as small as checking email after not looking at it for a day or two. As kids we didn't have that. We knew that school was starting but beyond that. There was no responsibility to be met. Or no impending deadlines for work. So time goes slower when you don't value it. And take it for granted. Like imagine being bored for an hour and being in a room versus being super busy with work and behind on deadlines with only an hour less. The first bored hour will seem more long and you'll find stuff to do like join a chess club, play sports recreationally, or read a book. But with a busy hour it feels like there literally isn't enough time in the day at that pace. That's how I think it works but just like expand hour to your whole life. That's just my theory. Might be completely wrong. But regardless of the reason time seems to speed up, I hate that it doesn't work the other way around. Literally getting older. Never thought much about when adults would say you're still young. Just enjoy it. I always wanted to be older because I was tired of HS. Wanted to be out of college. Etc. Now I want aging to slow down a bit. My great grandmother used to warn us that time speeds up when you're older. By gum. I think she's right. Edit. Get a load of these comments. I swear there is more toilet paper here than there's been since covid. I distinctly remember telling my grandmother as I approached my 9th birthday that I wished I could skip this birthday and go straight to 10. Because 10 years is a whole decade and how cool is that. She told me I shouldn't wish my life away. And that I would go quicker than I thought. I remember thinking. Well it's been pretty slow so far. I'm 24 now and. Uh. She was right. Why it's so annoying when you forget to take the chicken out of the freezer. I, too, will be ordering pizza tonight. But have you reached the phase of chicken is thawed but damn that still sounds like work. Then order a pizza still. Edit. To everyone giving me cooking advice. I know how to cook a damn chicken. If you want to come cook me some. Feel free. Otherwise. Leave me to my grease pizza. Can we get McDonald's? No we have food at home. My so is in his 30s and I still have to tell him that lol. I have to tell myself this pretty regularly too. At this age. The reason I tell myself it though is because I know I'm going to eat it and feel like an absolute trash can afterwards. Now I understand why my mom would order us happy meals and get herself nothing haha. 
When I was a kid my dad and I had a tradition every week of going to the video store and renting a movie or two to watch together. It was one of my favorite things to do. But I remember I used to get really upset at him because every single time we'd actually start to watch the movie he would fall asleep. It wasn't until I was older that I realized that the reason he would fall asleep was because he was exhausted from working two very physically demanding jobs to try and give me the best life he possibly could. On top of that, even though he was tired he still made an effort to try and start a little tradition with me and spend time with me. Those memories of me having to nudge my dad awake are so great in my eyes. Because they made me realize what a caring and hard working man he was and still is. Edit. Just wanted to add that my dad and I have kept our tradition going in a way. By watching a movie together every month or so. We used to go to the theaters. But obviously COVID is complicated that. So we settle for just watching something together on the couch. We did manage to get a theater to ourselves for his birthday this year. Here is a selfie of the two of us outside of the theater. He still falls asleep sometimes but I don't mind at all. He deserves it. My dad would turn off my UGR episode and put on basketball. Send him to the shadow realm. No one interrupts a game of duel monsters. It is possible to do everything right and still fail. Don't let it consume you. Pick up the pieces and move on. I had to learn this after a project that I was on for 3 years was sabotaged and shitkened. I did some amazing work and poured my life into that project. In the end I had nothing to show for it. It put me in a real slump for a few years. I'm still trying to pull myself out of it without becoming a cynical and jaded a-hole. Data learned this lesson from Captain Jean-Luc Picard. And so did I. Ro, thanks for my first awards. For people still wondering. The episode this occurs in is season 2 episode 21. Peak performance. I actually learned a lot of life lessons from Star Trek. The sound of your joints exploding every time you get up. Man I've been getting that since I was in high school. This. I'm 16. And whenever I move my legs. It sounds like a goddamn cement mixer. Edit. Thanks for the award. Kind stranger. For clarification. I'm 5 minutes. And 10 seconds and 120 pounds. Not overweight or anything. And my father had similar problems growing up. I don't know if it's necessarily hereditary or just because we both push ourselves too much. Nothing hurts. So I haven't been inclined to get anything checked out. Hell. I'll bring it up with the doctor next time I go. I had no idea this would blow up like this. It's nice to know I'm not the only young person like this. Something a little more lighthearted. But about half the jokes on cartoons like Spongebob take on a whole new light once you've got more experience under your belt. You either die a Spongebob or live long enough to become a Squidward. Man, nuts to that sponge. Squidward has to put up with an immature, unaware co-worker, who even on his days off won't leave him the hell alone. He just wanted some goddamn peace and quiet. Good people aren't always nice people, and vice versa. Edit. Thank you for the awards. Nice is not the same as kind. Nice is image management. Kind is caring about other people. What parents sacrifice just so you can do something fun. Last night my husband and I sat in a line of cars for an hour and a half so our kids could see this cheesy drive through light display in my town with Santa and other characters. Zero stroke 10 not worth it for us but the kids loved it and it was worth it to see them be able to do a fun Christmas activity during a pandemic. It made me think of how much my parents had to endure taking my brother and I to theme parks and stuff as a kid just to see us happy. I appreciate it infinitely more now. When I was pregnant I went to visit my hometown and my friends threw a baby shower for me. And I also had a few birthday presents from people for my birthday the month before. When I was packing to go home. There wasn't room for the baby stuff plus the stuff for me. So I took home all the baby stuff and left my presents behind for my granny to bring up at a later date. And I remember sitting there looking at my suitcase being like oh. So this is how it's going to be. Socks are a very nice gift. Yup, my first birthday after buying a house and moving out I asked for a sweater and socks and was very happy to have them. Yep, yeah, when you first move out and have your own place and all the bills with it, you start to question all those little purchases you'd have just whipped your wallet out for previously. EHH, I can get away with the socks I already have. I'll just match up odd pairs when they start getting holes in them. 
I don't need that new coat. I already own one. You can't afford to treat yourself to everything anymore and clothes are quite low on the list of priorities. Why elderly people in nursing homes who get no visitors are so lonely and filled with despair. We had to put my mom in a home because we physically could not care for her anymore. She didn't want to be there and we didn't want her to be. But there weren't any other options. My dad was there every day until he got sick and died. My sister and I stopped in a couple of times a week each. The last month of her life I was there every day. I hope she knew I did the best I could to take care of her. I'm sure she did. The most valuable thing you can do is give your time and it sounds like you did exactly that. She definitely knew. Red heart card suit. Teenagers are just kids. It's something I quite literally was not capable of understanding until I wasn't a teenager anymore. When I was a teenager I felt so grown up. And how sometimes. Some adults are just kids in adult bodies. Or how adults are simply just flawed human beings too. Used to look up to adults for what's right and wrong but as we grew older. We kind of realized that adults such as our parents are simply just flawed human beings and they may not know it all too either. In my teens and twenties. I just couldn't understand how my parents were so oblivious to celebrities. They were all over TV. Their names and faces blasted on everything. It seemed everybody had some strong emotionally charged opinion about every major actor, musician, director, or tabloid magnet. What are they? Living under a rock? Didn't take long to find out why. Growing up, I didn't have a pre-existing list of these are famous people. I learned them as they came onto the scene. Eventually, though, they all dropped off the list one by one. The list kept updating. It's a lot harder knowing who is a household name when you also have to know who is last week's news. I was only 30 when I realized. I have no idea who famous people are anymore. I just couldn't keep up at all. I've become like my parents. Don't know. And honestly, don't care. Celebrity worship, even as cursory as simply knowing their names, is a vapid, fruitless endeavor. Today's idols are tomorrow's trash. I try to explain this to my students all the time. They act so shocked and disgusted when I don't know who some random TikTok person is. As a single person with no kids in my mid-30s, I don't feel like I've hit a lot of adult milestones and float in a weird space because of it. Music has never made me feel old since there has always been new stuff I liked and didn't like. TikTok was the first time there was something the kids were doing that I just didn't effing get. Why is there an entire social media system built around goofy dance videos? How? I don't get it. Get off my tiny non-suburban lawn. That the quality rather than quantity of friends matters. I'd rather have 4 quarters in my pocket than 100 pennies. That's a great phrase. I love it. Understanding why your parents wanted you to go play with the awkward kid. Or why they were so keen to help you make friends. It's beyond annoying as a kid when your parents try to guide who make friends with. But most parents instinctually know that bad social habits start early, are hard to break, and can be a real burden when you are older. My mom never liked my friend group and it really annoyed me. Looking back half of them were a-holes anyway and the other half were already doing things that led them into a life of drug addiction after high school. I never got into drinking and drugs like that but everyone around me was doing it and I had every opportunity to. Looking back she was just looking out for me and even though she didn't have proof of what we were doing she was just an adult who had lived and could tell it wasn't a good group of friends. A parent's love for their child. A year after my granddaughter was born my daughter was telling me how wonderful her toddler is, how smart she is, and just all around lovable she is. She then said I don't think I could ever love anyone as much as I love my daughter. Then she paused for a moment as realization washed over her face. Dad, is this how much you love me? Bingo. Kiddo. Now you know. And how the opposite is true for those who had abusive parents. I read something once that really stuck with me. People with loving parents realize how much their parents love them once they have their own children. People with abusive parents realize just how cruel and ducked up their own childhood was and struggle with the realization that their parents could be that cruel to a child once they have their own kids. You rationalize the abuse away for years. Then you catch a glimpse of how truly vulnerable and innocent you were as a child and it's a whole new perspective on your experience. If you're one of those kids with abusive parents. 
Becoming a parent yourself can really set you back. Even if you feel like you've dealt with your demons. Edit. It's heartbreaking to see how strongly this resonated with so many people. I hope everyone in this situation can find their way towards some kind of peace. Red Heart. If you can place another life before you. If you can pledge your never looked apart. For just the trust of those who just adore you. For just the love that waits inside a heart if you can say you'll always try intently. If you can hope you'll hold them safe and strong. For just the care of those you're holding gently. And even when it seems it's going wrong if you can swear you'll never just discard them. And always know inside your mind you won't. Then raise a child. And love. Protect. And guard them but if you can't but if you can't then don't. Hand me downs. I absolutely hated them. Even though my grandma was a genius with them. Dying. Artistic patches. New buttons. They just didn't last compared to the new clothes my older sister had. Then I had three boys in six years. I'm seriously grateful that my grandma tried so hard to make my hand-me-downs look good. I get it now. I totally thought that I was going to buy all new cute stuff for my kiddo. Then the pandemic hit and I hate buying online. My brother came by with an enormous bag full of clothes from size 18 M3T and my sill had kept them all in pristine condition despite the fact that most of them had been worn by both of my nephews and I'm so grateful. Kiddo won't need new clothes for at least a year. Hopefully, he is growing fast. Same when I lost weight really rapidly. Buying new clothes is too expensive when they're going to be hanging off you in 2 months. Go to the thrift store. Edit. OMG. This is the first time that one of my comments has been so popular. And I got an award too. Thank you for that. Thrift stores rule. But buy new underwear. New underwear is a basic human right. Semicolon. Edit 2. Another thing that I wanted to suggest is if you want to donate your used items to places other than thrift stores. If you don't have friends to pass the stuff along to. Check and see if you have any community services that need the stuff. I used to work for a drug and domestic violence recovery center. The center has a program for women who are coming out of recovery from whatever they need help with who are pregnant or have children under the age of 1. They provide emergency housing, counseling, and training on how to take care of your little one while also helping to recover from substance abuse if that's what the mother is receiving help with. If you have any community services like that, I'm sure they'd be thrilled to take your hand-me-downs. Colon. We were gifted a tub of clothes for our son. We added to it, and gifted that tub a few years later. I'm sure that tub is still making the rounds. Seriously, don't go buy clothes. Every parent that has a child is happy to give you whatever no longer fits their child. And, please take these toys as well. Yes, and these shoes. Want a crib? We've got one. Plus a stroller, and a bike, and a stand-up scooter. Stuffed animals galore. Why the pet hamster change color? Press F for biscuit. F. Now give me biscuit. That everything has shades of grey is a sliding scale. It is so easy to understand the world as absolutes when young. Suddenly realizing in my late teens early 20s that basically nothing is an absolute was a total revelation that really steers my understanding of everything and undoubtedly makes me a better person. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.